Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Asteroids and comets are more than just frozen rocks flying about in space. They're key to understanding the early history of our solar system. And we're here to answer your questions about asteroids and comets. Stay tuned, Science Trek is next. I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek. And welcome to the observatory on top of the education building on the Boise State University campus. We're here to answer your questions about asteroids and comets. And later on in the show, we'll go along as students compete to develop tools for NASA to use when exploring a comet or asteroid. So let's get started by learning a little bit more about asteroids and comets. Let's meet two small solar system bodies. First, comets. Comets formed far from the sun. They're made of dust, ice, and gas left over after the sun and planets formed. Most comets come from two places. The first, the Kuiper Belt, a region of space beyond Neptune. Comets from here are known as short period comets because they take 200 years or less to make one orbit around the sun. The other place is the Oort cloud, a far distant cloud of maybe a trillion comets that surround the solar system. Comets from here are known as long period comets because one trip around the sun can last as long as 30 million years. Comets are sometimes called dirty snowballs because they contain mostly ice and frozen gases like carbon dioxide with just a little bit of dust. Sometimes the gravitational pull of a passing star stirs up the comets in the Oort cloud, sending them flying toward the sun. And sometimes gravity from a planet can knock a comet in the Kuiper belt on its journey, falling inward toward the sun. The comet follows an elliptical path, moving faster and faster as it gets closer to the sun. The heat of the sun starts to warm the surface of the comet's nucleus, a ball of ice and dust at the comet's center. As the ice warms, it makes a cloud of gas and dust around the nucleus called a coma. The gas and dust in the coma can escape into space, forming two tails. The dust tail is curvy because it falls behind the comet. The gas tail is straight because it points outward from the sun. Comets nuclei have diameters of about 6 to 25 miles, but the tails can grow millions of miles long. Some comets show up just once, but more than 200 comets come back past the Earth at predictable times. Halley's Comet is one of the most famous periodic comets, flying past the Earth about every 75 years. Comets are often named after the person who discovered it. Halley's Comet is named after the English astronomer Edmund Halley. Although he officially discovered it, Chinese astronomers first noted the comet's visit in 239 BCE. Halley's Comet was even included in an old tapestry showing the 1066 invasion of England by William the Conqueror. It was said William felt Halley's Comet heralded his success. Let's meet our next small solar system buddy, asteroids. Asteroids form closer to the sun than comets, so they're basically just small rocky objects. No ice, it was just too hot. Most asteroids orbit the sun in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Because of their small size, most don't have enough gravity to form into ball-like shapes, so they can be lumpy. And they could be covered with craters from impacts with other asteroids and comets over billions of years. Asteroids range in size from a few yards to more than 335 miles in length. The largest asteroid is Pallas. Asteroids are usually the color of lead in a pencil. They're made up of clay, metals, and silicate rock. Silicates usually are made up of silicon and oxygen atoms and are the most common form of minerals on Earth. Asteroids generally take three to six years to orbit the Sun, and those orbits can come pretty close to Earth. The gravity from planets, especially Jupiter or Mars, can also toss asteroids out into space. And when asteroids collide, 
the leftover bits and pieces can make their way toward Earth, as they did over Russia in 2013. And what do these two small solar system bodies have in common? Asteroids and comets both played an important role in the Earth's history. Scientists think comets may have brought water and some of the chemical compounds needed to form life here on Earth. Comets and asteroids have hit the Earth countless times, changing our planet. For example, an asteroid or comet more than six miles wide smashed into the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico more than 65 million years ago, wiping out most of the dinosaurs, many plants and animals. NASA and other agencies now track asteroids and comets to keep our planet safe. Asteroids and comets don't experience erosion like the Earth does, so their surfaces can be billions of years old. And because they've changed so little over time, asteroids and comets can help scientists understand the conditions that existed when the solar system was formed. And when a comet is far away from the sun and doesn't have a coma or a tail, it can be pretty hard to tell the difference between it and an asteroid. So they have lots of similarities. Both are important small solar bodies that can tell us a lot about our world and beyond. And joining me now to answer your questions about asteroids and comets are Brian Jackson, Assistant Professor of Physics at Boise State University, and Camille Eddy, Boise State University NASA Microgravity Team Leader. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us, John. Yeah, really excited. Okay, let's answer your questions. Hi, my name is Katrina. I go to Liberty Elementary School, and my question is, how are asteroids formed? Asteroids are formed from the leftover material after the sun and the planets formed. So there are collections of rock and dust that agglomerated over millions of years a long, long time ago, right at the birth of our solar system. Hi, my name is Ashley. I go to Lewis and Clark Middle School, and my question is, how frequently do comets pass the Earth? Comets enter the inner solar system every few months, really. Some years you get many comets in a, a single month. Hi, my name is Caden, and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School, and my question is, has a comet ever hit our moon, and how many? Comets impact the moon quite a bit. There are a lot of impact craters that you can see from the moon, and that happened from different meteorites, comets, and asteroids hitting the moon. Simran asks, what was the first ever comet's name? The first comet it was called the Great Comet of 1680. It's also called the Curtis Comet, and it was observed about 1680, and then it went away, but we are still tracking it today. As of a couple years ago, it was about 23 astronomical units away from the sun. My name is William. I go to Eagle Elementary School of the Arts. My question is, what's inside a asteroid? The largest asteroids are actually big enough that they've differentiated. So deep in the interior are, is iron and other metals. And then as you move to the exterior, you encounter more and more rock. Some of the smallest asteroids are actually so low in gravity, though, that they're full of holes. They have very high porosity. So in some cases, asteroids are full of metals and rocks. In other cases, asteroids are full of empty space. My name is Colin and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, can asteroids it's turn into comets? Sometimes scientists have a hard time differentiating between what are comets and what are asteroids, basically because comets contain ice and asteroids don't. And after many times around the sun, comets will start to lose their ice. So generally, I would say comets don't turn into asteroids, but uh, sometimes there is a hard time to differentiate between which is which. So why did you want to study asteroids and comets? I am really interested in human exploration in space. And so since this gives us an opportunity to go out there ourselves and sample an asteroid, a body basically in space that is foreign to us, I was really interested in being able to help us step up our game and take it to the next level and being able to give NASA um, an idea for an actual valuable tool that they will use in a future human exploration. Mia asks, were the dinosaurs wiped out when a huge comet or asteroid hit the Earth a long time ago? Beginning in 1980, planetary scientists and astronomers found ample evidence to suggest that an impactor 
struck the Earth about 65 million years ago on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, that impact was so large that it actually enshrouded the entire Earth in a cloud of dust and blocked out the sun probably for many weeks or months. This led to an environmental cataclysm that ultimately culminated in the extinction of the dinosaurs. So what do comets sound like? The Rosetta probe recorded these sounds from the comet 67P Toroiva Grosseminka. The sound has been boosted so we can hear it, and scientists aren't quite sure how or why this comet sings. Hi, my name is Jaren, and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, is it possible to see asteroids and comets from Earth? Sometimes it's hard to see asteroids and comets from Earth, especially without an unaided eye, so without a telescope. But the easiest part of a comet to see would be its tail when it's closer to Earth. Hi, my name is Austin. I go to AJ Winters Elementary School. My question is, why do comets have tails? So comets contain ice, which when they get closer to the sun, uh, they tend to stream out those particles. They expel the particles, and that's what we see in orbit. Carly would like to know, how many categories do asteroids fall into? Astronomers over the years have come up with lots of different ways of classifying asteroids, and there's more than a dozen different categories that asteroids fall into based upon the compositions of their surfaces, based upon their orbital architectures. So there's lots and lots of different ways that astronomers classify asteroids, dozens of different categories. Hi, my name is Alex, and I go to Taylor's Costing Public Charter School, and my question is, how big is the biggest comet? So Comet Sarabat has a core that's about 100 miles wide, and Comet McNaught has a core that's about 15 miles long, but its tail is about 139 million miles long. Hi, my name is Brooks and I go to school in Utah and my question is, are there any useful materials that can be found on asteroids? So in asteroids, there are some cool materials that are there. Um, they're called precious materials here on Earth, like gold, copper, zinc, um, platinum, tungsten, and many other things that we would actually like to potentially mine to bring back on Earth. Hi, I'm Sarai Dominguez. I go to Hawthorne Elementary. And I want to know if comets go faster in outer space or when they're coming down to Earth. Most comets orbit the sun, and so as they come in from very far away, they get accelerated by the sun's gravity to tens of thousands of miles an hour. When they strike the surface of the Earth, the Earth's gravity can also accelerate them, so comets can come in very fast to the Earth. Ava would like to know, what is the type of gas that is released from a comet? Comets are often referred to as dirty snowballs, so they're a mixture of ice and dust. And that ice, as it gets close to the sun, begins to sublimate or vaporize into space and produces gaseous uh, carbon monoxide and water and a couple of other things, nitrogen. So there's lots of different gases that come off of comets. Hi, my name is Alex. I go to Middleton Middle School, and my question is how fast can an asteroid travel? Asteroids can travel pretty fast in space. In fact, asteroid 433 Eros can travel about 24 kilometers per second or 15 miles per second. My name is Cody and I go to uh, the intermediate school and my question is, did comets really bring water to Earth? Actually, it's a little bit of a mystery where the Earth's water comes from. A lot of it was probably delivered by comets, but the isotopic composition of the ice in comets is somewhat inconsistent with the isotopic composition of water in the Earth's oceans. And so it's not clear exactly where all of Earth's water came from, although comets probably delivered a large fraction of it. Anytime an astronaut goes into space, he or she takes tools along. But working in little or no gravity, or microgravity, can make things tough. So you need specialized tools to do the job. Engineers at NASA have challenged college students to help them design the next generation of tools. The microgravity team at Boise State University has a specific assignment. In the future, NASA hopes to intercept an asteroid 
and uh, do experiments on it. And so this tool is one tool that they hope will be able to be used that, to uh, collect rocks off of it. So our tool is a grabber. It's a float sample grabber. It picks up loose rocks off an asteroid surface. And picking up rocks in space isn't easy. Here on Earth, we have gravity that we consider normal and we can pick things up easily. So on an asteroid, there's very little gravity. So if you were to just reach out and try to grab, uh, they're called float samples, which is basically a small rock on the surface of the asteroid, you could knock it or yourself out into space. So NASA gave the BSU team the parameters for the tool. That means the general size and shape and what the tool should do. And then the students started brainstorming. And where do you think they got the inspiration for their tool? We saw uh, a basically a, a dog scooper, you know, that you have in the park. And we said, that's a great idea. So the team went to work. Everything had to be designed from scratch with everything, and I mean everything, even the tiniest screw had to be approved. There's a big handle, uh, it has to fit those gloves of the astronauts, they're really bulky, it's like a hockey glove. And uh, the next thing you'll see is there is a set of three boxes on a pulley system, on a conveyor belt, and there's a very clear handle that you're supposed to grab and that's how you advance the boxes and when you squeeze the trigger the boxes will open. The biggest obstacle I think is just trying to get all of the pieces parts to work exactly the way we intend. We spent a very long time working out lots of little kinks as we found them in the design. And then the big moment. NASA divers try BSU's tool in NASA's neutral buoyancy lab at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Their NASA engineers put the tool through a series of tests to see if it could someday be used on an asteroid. So Camille, what happened? We went to NASA Johnson Space Center and visited the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, which is the big pool where they allowed us to do testing um, on our tool and figure out how well it worked. What we did was we took a tool that we built and we got to sample those products, those um, basically they were test rocks that were sitting in the bottom of the pool. The divers went down and they operated our tool with the, their hands and they opened and closed the tool and was able to collect samples off the bottom of the pool. Did it work? Yeah, it worked really well. It was one of the fastest tool um, there at the, that week and we were able to collect a bunch of different samples as well as test the different ways you can collect a sample. So sometimes they would throw the rock across the tool and try to grab it while it was moving across space. And they would also do tests with, can they use it with their non-dominant hand? Will it work well with either hand? And uh, it worked pretty well. The divers are pretty happy about it and they came up and gave us some really cool tips for the future. Would you do it again? I would definitely suggest anyone interested in um, a lot of space science research and uh, getting a hand on what you can do as a NASA scientist to definitely join the program. I know that I am definitely um, geared up to participating in more NASA projects um, that will help broaden my skill set and give me more exposure to what it's like to be a NASA scientist or engineer. Thanks, Camille. Okay, let's go back to your questions. My name is Bray Brayden. I go to AJ Winters and my question is, how do they name comets? So comets are typically named after the person who discovered them, but they can also have a numerical name, which is based on what kind of orbit they have, what year they were discovered, what part of the month they were discovered in, and then w what the number the discovery was, like what number it represented. Claire would like to know, can an asteroid shoot out of the solar system and into a different galaxy? Comets are very often ejected from the solar system. In some cases, asteroids can also be ejected from the solar system. But galaxies are really, really far apart, and they're not that big, actually, compared to the space between the galaxies. And so it can be very difficult for asteroids to go from one galaxy to the other. Hi, my name is Adrian, and I go to Cynthia Man Elementary School. And my question is, is it possible for humans to ride an asteroid or comet? We haven't ridden an asteroid or comet yet. But soon NASA has plans to go and visit an asteroid and collect geological samples off an asteroid um, by taking astronauts there and having them collect different samples and bring those back to Earth to study. There's also talks about having astronauts going to Mars to ride on an asteroid on their way to Mars to make it go a little bit faster. 
From a distance, everything in our solar system appears to be in its place. However, if you take a closer look, sometimes you can find asteroids, like Bennu, leaving their home in the inner asteroid belt and passing very close to Earth. Most other asteroids tend to stay grouped together in a few regions of our solar system, yet some still end up in our backyard. So once these asteroids get close, what makes the difference between a near miss and a potential hit? NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission will help better answer this question when it visits Bennu, but scientists think that a force called the Yarkovsky effect might be an important part of the answer. So how does this effect work? Well, like Earth, most asteroids rotate slowly as they move through space. During the day, the surface of the asteroid is illuminated by the sun, so it absorbs heat and grows warmer. During the night, however, the surface cools down, emitting the heat it absorbed as radiation. This radiation exerts a force on the asteroid, acting as a sort of mini-thruster that can slowly change the asteroid's direction over time. On larger asteroids, this doesn't amount to much, but on small ones, it can make a pretty large change over time. Because the surface emits the most heat radiation at the end of the day, the direction the asteroid rotates can ultimately determine what happens in the long run. Other factors, such as composition, asteroid shape, and surface features, can modify the magnitude and direction of the Yarkovsky thrust. By studying the Yarkovsky effect on Bennu with the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, NASA scientists hope to better predict how an asteroid might move through the solar system and whether it poses any danger to us here on Earth. So the next time an asteroid starts gradually moving into our neighborhood, we'll have a better idea of exactly where it'll end up. Everyone would like to know, when was Ceres discovered? Ceres, which is one of the very largest asteroids in the asteroid belt, was discovered back in 1801 and was among the first asteroids to be discovered. Hi, my name is Audra and I go to Compass, Compass Public Charter School. My question is, what is the average size of a comet? The nuclei of comets, the centermost rock and ice ball, can span tens of mi uh, miles across, so they can be quite large, but their tails, as they begin to vaporize and approach the sun, can span across the sky as seen from the Earth and extend hundreds of millions of miles in space. Tori would like to know, how often does Halley's Comet return to Earth? The last time Halley's Comet was here was 1986, and Halley's Comet usually comes back around every 75 to 76 years. Asteroids and comets aren't the only small solar bodies to remember. There are also the three M's. A meteoroid is a tiny rocky body in space smaller than an asteroid. It can be as small as a grain of dust. A meteor is the streak of light that forms when a meteoroid enters Earth's atmosphere and burns up. We sometimes call it a shooting star. If that meteoroid, or parts of it, survive the fall through the Earth's atmosphere and strike the ground, then it's called a meteorite. So a meteoroid is found in space, a meteor is seen in the Earth's atmosphere, and a meteorite is found on the ground. Hi, my name is Justin, and my question is, why do uh, asteroids hit explode when they hit the Earth's atmosphere? Asteroids come into the Earth's atmosphere with very high speeds, about 11 kilometers per second or higher. And so as they come into the atmosphere, they become heated by the friction with the atmosphere. And that substantial heating can actually cause the, the asteroids to vaporize very quickly and in some cases even explode in the atmosphere. If someone is interested in getting a job studying or investigating asteroids and comets, what should he or she study in school? Studying your science and your math is so important, not only just to do studies of asteroids and comets, but to study astronomy more generally. Science and math are really these keys that can open up doors almost to any technical career, particularly astronomy of asteroids and comets. Luke asked, why do comets not melt when they get so close to the sun? Comets actually do melt as they get close to the sun, but they come off in chunks and layers. So it usually takes a couple of passes around the sun for you to see them not to have as much ice as you might see. Hi, my name is India and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary. And my question is, what is the biggest comet that has ever been recorded in history? So Comet McNaught is about 
15 miles wide, and its tail is about 139 million miles long. Critics would like to know, how many asteroids are there in the solar system? There are millions of asteroids in the solar system, ranging from asteroids that are hundreds of kilometers across to things that are just barely bigger than a dust grain. Hi, my name is Michael. I go to Cynthia Man Elementary School. My question is, how are asteroids and comets created? So comets and asteroids form by having other bodies collide with each other and stick. And then as they travel through space, they attract more and more bodies in space and they stick to and become bigger. Sydney asks, do comets have colors on them? Comets are pretty bland in their coloration, mostly grays and whites. But if your eyes could see in other wavelengths of light outside of the optical, comets could be quite colorful. And astronomers actually use different colors in the ultraviolet and the infrared to learn about the compositions of the comets based on their colors in those wavelengths. Hi, my name is Decker. I go to Riverside Elementary, and my question is, what are asteroids made of? Uh, asteroids are made primarily out of rock, but many asteroids also have metals in them, like iron or nickel. And some asteroids even have a little bit of ice in them. Maddie would like to know, are there several asteroid belts? There's only one main asteroid belt in our solar system, but it composed of many different subgroups of, of asteroids, which each have their own sort of orbital architectures. But out past the asteroid belt, there's another collection of, of icy bodies called the Kuiper Belt, and even farther out beyond that is the Oort Cloud, where many of our comets come from. Hi, my name is Courtney, and I go to Cynthia Mill Elementary School. And my question is, what is the difference between asteroids and comets? So asteroids live closer to the sun, and they don't have ice on them. They'll have very little ice. So they're made of rocks and uh, metals. Comets live further from the sun, which kind of allows them to have ice. So they typically have a lot of ice, and as well as rocky surfaces and metals as well. I'm sorry we've run out of time. My thanks to Camille and Brian for answering questions today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Our thanks also to the folks here at the Boise State Observatory for hosting us. You can learn lots more about asteroids and comets and lots of other science topics on the Science Trek website. We'll answer more questions about asteroids and comets on the Science Trek The Web Show. And if you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy. And you and your class can win prizes. You can send it as an email or a video question. Record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. Our last prize winner was Jordan in Mrs. Aveda's class at Oahe Harbor School in Boise. So to find out all about asteroids and comets and how to send in your questions and how to win, go to the Science Trek website. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.